My wonderful neighbor gives me her scraps almost every morning for the chickens. All right, so now I gotta go feed the other dogs. Oh, I forgot to leave Alex some. He'll climb through the fence. He climbs himself back and forth and eats whenever he's ready. He does it his way. <laughs> I'll put it over here where he climbs through. He can, he uses the porch right here, um, right there. And he uses it as a ladder, so I'll put it there for him to climb through. If I let the goats over, they eat the dog food. But I will let them over later because they can nosh on some cool grass and Although they aren't eating the grass that's in their own space. But it's cooler. It gets cooler over here under the trees. Um, they have a tree, but their place is all dirt, so it's kind of not as, not as cool later. Oh. This heat, it's only, it's, I don't think it's nine o'clock. I had to recover from my walk because it got really pitiful actually. And so I I was just cooling down for a little while, watching the news. And uh, I'm out here again and it's brutal out here, I gotta tell you. It doesn't take long, you start feeling that heat again. All right, <laughs> they're all hollering. Even Samson. Samson can't really get that much hay because he doesn't have any teeth to chew it. And he eats the grass pellets. So he really is waiting for me to come and give him some, <laughs> some food. Okay, there we go. There you go. Come on, Gemma. Don't jump on me. I don't like that, you guys. Here, let's see. There we go. All right, come on. Come on, Gemma. I have to feed Gemma in or she won't let Danny eat. So I put them apart. She takes five seconds, so it, it's not like a big burden or anything. So Gemma keeps Danny from eating and the goats keep the goat the other dogs from eating and oh my goodness. Wild things. Wild things. You're looking so weird, my Breezy. Breezy's just looking like her little bitty tiny self again. Okay, let's go. Come on. Hi, Alexa. It's so hot and the dogs like to swim. I mean, they need it. So I'm gonna get the bigger water tank and put it out here.
Oh my goodness, see, it's just devastatingly hot. It's like, it's hotter than baking bread. It's like melting groceries, <laughs> melting ice sculpture hot. Oh my goodness. So, uh, I have to wait for the water, so I'll probably sit down here for a minute. Oh, hi, my beautiful little bitty breeze. Look at how tiny she is again. She is so sweet. My little bitty. And uh, Blossom's a little girl, but she's not um, as wiry looking. Um, still wondering if Ash managed to impregnate my Bliss or my Bristol before he left. We'll find out eventually. <laughs> There's a possibility. He was full on buck when he left, if you know what I mean. Everybody's doing really well. Oh, the cutest thing. Um, little um, Corey lives down the street from here, from me. I see him every day. I don't see him. I walk by where he lives and I say, Corey, and I hear his little voice call back to me. <laughs> He's so fun. <laughs> the beautiful little uh, red buckskin. Hello, my gorgeous Bree. Here she is. It was her little Ash that was here so long that he may have, he may have, uh, carried on uh, Briar's bloodline. <laughs> there goes Alex to go eat probably, but I can't let him. I'll go get his food down now that the, and I'll leave the goats in here. I had opened the pasture for them, but I'll get his food down and here, buddy. There, mister. Cause he can put himself back over here, baby. There you go, mister. There you go, Alex. Boy. There's your good boy. He still acts like that about getting fed. Um, I'm pretty sure there was some trauma associated with his food because um, I have a feeling he was, and I've said this before, I have a feeling that he was probably, as if you remember back, Alex was near death when we got him. Um, and I think he would get in the trash or something. And then he would get in trouble. And so he is still, he won't eat food until you walk away. He just sits by it or watches you. And then when you walk away, he will, he will eat. And he's just never really gotten over that. My baby, my Brie, she's always, She's always right here by me. It's time for iron. It's not too, too bad. There's hair on the tip of her tail, but it is time for their iron. And if you haven't watched before, the only way I can do their iron is, um, is to um, put it in a Fig Newton. Some of them, I have had to actually open the iron and put it in the Fig Newton because they wouldn't eat the capsule. And others will do the, eat the capsule with no issue. Um, but it's definitely time for iron. And uh, I'm, excuse me, what am I talking about iron? It's copper, it's time for copper. Oh, it's too hot to think. <laughs> I can't, I can't focus, it's so hot. And it's only like nine o'clock in the morning, honestly. My booey eyes. Her last baby, um, her udder's a little bit crooked and my poor breezy boy, her little boy, um, Buster, the one that died, he only ate off one side too. It, it was not something I could keep up with. <clears throat> There's my babies. Here's my Bristol. She's also, when I got Bristol, it took her forever to be a mama's girl. And you know when they get really, really attached to you, really trusting of you is after they kid the first time and you're there with them. 
and um, and help them and comfort them. After that, they become mama's girls and they want your attention. And I sit with them, I give them cookies and I love them so much. They know it, they know it. All right, so Bree, um, Bristol's udder has dried up much faster than um, Bliss's, who, whose udder is drying up. But Bristol, and that might be indicative of getting pregnant again. So, um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see if she did or didn't. And I, I, I really honestly saw Ash not literally make contact, you know, not, I saw him be able to extend. I saw him and BJ, my, my gimpy old weather here after Bristol. So I knew she was in heat and um, we talked about this before. It was like not something I would have probably allowed had I been in a place to do anything different about it. I tried separating Ash and he literally almost killed himself trying to get back to his mother. So I just, I just let him have it because the animal meat support to me then. And here's my Betty. Here's my old Betty. Yeah, she's one of my first here. My very, very first goat I ever got was at, when I lived in Washington State. My youngest son, who's going to be... Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Oh my gosh, he's going to be 29 next month. <gasps> anyway, he was born up in Washington State, Olympia, Washington. And I had a little pygmy goat and her name was Shelby. She was black. And she, her only friend were the chickens and all that and my chow chow. They ran around together like they were both goats or both dogs or what. <laughs> See, look at Alex. He goes back and forth when he wants to and, and I just allow him to. That way he can manage when he eats. Hello, my precious boy. Did you eat, sweet baby? I got dirty eyes. Oh, wait in the dirt. Yeah, he wait in the dirt. You, I gave you a bigger pool so you can go swimming. There's our boy. He's a fine baby. Oh my gosh. Yesterday, yesterday I was started off my walk and the pasture was open and there was nobody in the pasture when I walked by the first time. And the second mile I walked by and Breeze was over in the pasture alone without the herd. But guess who was laying with her? Alex. He is the best goat dad ever. He will not let a goat go too far away from the herd alone. He's just amazing. And then you saw how he takes care of the little babies when they're born. He literally fathers them. He cleans them like their mamas do. So he's amazing, amazing dog. And this dog was so mistreated, emaciated, and almost, um, I didn't think he would survive. He was so, so, um, so bad. But he did. He did. And that's almost two years ago now. And he's the best, one of the best six dogs I've got. <laughs> oh, he's a mess too. He really needs to be stripped. But I was waiting for the flies and those bull nets and all that to calm down because it's, um, they're chewing up all the, all the animals, you know. Um, and I didn't want to shorten his hair so that they would more easily get to his skin like they did my Bella. Hi, BJ. Here's my old BJ. My old gimpy BJ with the arthritis. Like Fred Sanford used to say, the arthritis. So pretty soon, 
when I can. It needs to be within a week or two here for sure. I need to strip Alex, probably Allie and Gemma. Bella's already done and Danny and Diego have short coats. So they'll be more comfortable. They'll be easier to keep clean. Here's my Betty. Hello, my beautiful Brie. There's my girl. The flies and stuff are so much better now. As soon as we get a rain, though, you know it, it won't be. But there's no danger of that coming soon. So definitely need to be raking up this property right here where the goats stay. In here, that was um, Samson over there getting... Um, Bobby to let him eat, have some. Bristol's, Bristol's one of those that would put everyone in their place. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we start seeing some changes in Bristol. If, if Ash got her. Because he was... Um, at least four months old if not older and that, like I said I, I saw he had total ability and was interested and um, and she had been without a baby for several months while he was here so I think we're gonna find out a big surprise if not that's okay too because we will wait until fall later in the fall so we don't have babies too early in the winter because it's very brutal here in the winter and we don't have enclosed barn type things to put the goats in and it frightens me it makes it hard for me to sleep so we'll just there see they want to go in the pasture now There's not a ton of like pasture grass out here, but it's still cooler to go up under there. All right, y'all. The water's just about done over here. So I'm going to go get me out of the heat and uh, get a mosquito dunk thing to put in my, in the animal's water tanks. So they, they don't get um, mosquito larvae in them. You guys have a great day. Try to stay cool. Don't overdo it. I'm guilty of that. I'll see you in, next time.